The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up on Life Today, Bible teacher Beth Moore encourages us to remember what God has done. Your clothing did not wear out on you. That means that they came out of the wilderness in the same outfit they went in with. <sighs> I'd, be, I'd be willing, but, but oh, oh, I'm glad I don't have to. Amen. Don't forget to remember next. sharing her heart with you. And I'm, Betty, and this yeah, is James. Yeah, thank you. You know, we uh, just love the opportunity of sharing with you. I'm looking down here at Beth's uh, teaching series. It's called Don't Forget to Remember. You know, over and over in the Old Testament, the Lord kept reminding his people to remember. The New Testament talks about being, us forgetting. Peter was writing about we forgot that we've been purged from our old sins. It, it's pretty easy sometimes not to really think about the incredible manifest blessings of God and the results that come and to remember the things that we have heard, learned, observed, or experienced that really teach us lifelong lessons. Beth is an incredible communicator. I know you believe that. So would you all here welcome Beth Moore? Here she is. me to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Oh, I was going to tell you something. If you're just tuning in, I was telling a story about how I love women of all shapes, sizes, and all these looks. But what I forgot to tell you, it's so funny because when I write down my makeup artist's name, her name is Faith. And so sometimes it gets lost in my notes because I think it's reminding me to talk about faith. Well, this is a faith that is a person and not a thing, although she is a person who does the thing. But she told me something, and I want just somebody blessed and edified. You know when I said I just love women? She said to me, she didn't even know I'd had that conversation in the car coming up. But she said to me, I love women's faces. I love women's faces. Because that's what she does all the time. She said, Beth, she said, I just want to take them in my hands like this. She said, I never see a woman that I do not think is Mm. That is powerful, isn't it? It's just, she sees with the eyes of Jesus. And all of you, my brothers, if you are in Christ, you radiate with him and you are a work of art. Now, I'm going to read to you all of Deuteronomy chapter 8. It's 19 verses and I kept trying to think how I could cut it back and zero it in and I, I can't do it. Not for the theme that we have going today. So we're just going to have to uh, let it be what it is and you're going to have to just hang with it. So whatever you may be doing, try to hang with the reading if you can. Now, my grandson Jackson, who is six, is an extremely active person. Now, I don't know who he takes after, but he's just... <laughs> Very enthusiastic about a lot of things. And he, um, it is hard for him to sit still. And this has been his first year. You know, kindergarten, back in my kids' day, used to be a half-day affair. Now they just go, it just goes on and on and on and on. They're, these little bitty things are there all day long until 3 o'clock. And it's just mind-blowing to me. But, but um, Manda told me, we were walking out from our church service on Sunday, and we were watching him walk because when he sat a long time... <laughs> He has to do, he walks to the car. Now, the camera's going to need to get my legs on this because there's a lot of action that goes on with the legs, yes. And so she said, Mother, she goes, she walks to get him every single day. Uh, rain, uh, uh, sleet, snow, whatever it happens to be. She walks to get him with Annabeth every single day to bring him home. And she says, all the way home, he jerks a limb. All the way home. She said she just has him in front of her so that she can just enjoy the ride. So it's... If, if at any point I'm reading that you just kind of need to do it, you just go right ahead and we're going we're gonna to get it done. Um, Deuteronomy 8, verse 1, The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give your fathers. 
and you shall remember the whole way. Somebody say the whole way. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you. That means that they came out of the wilderness in the same outfit they went in with. <sighs> I don't know. I'd be, I'd be willing, but, but oh, oh, I'm glad I don't have to. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad. It says, your clothing did not wear out on you and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Okay, this has nothing to do with our lesson, but I love a little bit of, um, of Bible untrivia when it says um, your feet did not swell. That word swell um, in the Hebrew also translates dough as in bread dough. And so if any of you who have taken a baby full term <laughs> know what that looks like. <laughs> where you look down at your feet and think, whose feet are those? <laughs> I have never seen those in my entire, I have no idea whose feet those belong to. So even they, those women went full term and their feet did not swell. And it says in verse five, you're going, we, woman, we got to verse 19, get with it. <laughs> know that in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God, this is going to be a little bit important to us in a moment. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a, a good land. Now, when I tell them to repeat something, I want you to, to too, the more you participate, the more you're going to get out of this on Wednesday. So answer back um, when, when I invite you to. Uh, somebody say, a good land. A good land. Uh, look at one another and say, he's bringing you into a, a good land. And it says, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hill, hills. Uh, this will be important. Verse 8, kind of let it ring in your head. We'll be back to it. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, and a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper and you shall eat and be full and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Verse 11, take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of, you can almost hear him going, who saved your scrawny neck, amen? Who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Verse 17, beware, lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. I want to pause just long enough to tell you from a New Testament point of view, um, in the Old Testament, much of the word wealth was about wealth. For us, we have spiritual wealth. That is what we are promised. Uh, riches in Christ Jesus. So um, the covenantal promises are a little bit different. I mean, he can do whatever he wants. He can bless us physically. He can do whatever he wants if he can be glorified, if he can do it to the good of man and to the glory of his own name. He can do anything he wants. But I'm saying the promise for us is spiritual wealth. 
our wealth in Christ, every spiritual blessing in Christ. Ephesians 1 would be a place that you would want to look into that. So, so keep that in mind because we can misuse that wealth as well and that would be huge to us. 18, you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Uh, it says, and if you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the Lord your God. Let me read that again in verse 20. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, take a little perusal down that chapter just for a moment. I just want you to let, let your eyes jump. And for those of you who are watching, um, I, I'm going to let it jump to you while I say it. But you see in verse 2, it says, and you shall remember the whole way that the Lord has led you. Then verse 11, if you like to put stars out by your Bible, you might star these places um, or highlight it on your iPad. Verse 2, you shall remember. Everybody say, you shall remember. You shall remember. Then verse 11 says, take care lest you forget the Lord your God. Say, don't forget. don't forget. This is all in one chapter. Lest when you have eaten and are full and build good houses and live in them, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Going down to verse 18, you shall remember the Lord your God. And then go to verse 19. And if you forget the Lord your God, I solemnly warn you today that you will surely perish. I want you to look back um, to... Uh, Verse 2, because this is going to be exactly where we're going to settle for this present series when it says, and you shall remember. I want to tell you today that spiritually speaking, amnesia can kill you. It can flat out murder you. All it takes for us to perish for all practical purposes in our calling and what God has uh, placed before us as a destiny before the foundation of the world was put into place by his voice, everything we were meant to be about honestly can flat out perish if we forget what the Lord our God has done and is doing for us. Lest we forget, lest we forget. I, I love the wording in verse 11 because it says this. It says this in the version I'm reading from. It says in verse uh, 11, take care, take care. You know how often we say to one another, well, take care of yourself. Well, okay, have a great day. Take care. Be sure and take care. Everybody say, take care. Take we, care. we say it over and over again. Wouldn't it be something? I mean, it, it would be uh, almost revolutionary to us if those two words became to us when somebody said them. They're just saying the thing that we always say. Now, take care. They sign a letter, take care. Sign an email, take care of yourself. Be sure you take care of yourself. If we begin to associate it with this chapter because to take care of ourselves would be not to forget. <laughs> you really want to take good care of yourself? Do not forget what the Lord your God has done for you. Lest you forget, because spiritually speaking, amnesia can kill you. It is deadly. It kills ministries because people forget. They forget. He, he said uh, to Saul, when you were small in your own eyes, I could powerfully use you. But now you think you're a big shot. And you know what? I'm paraphr obviously paraphrasing. And now I'm going to set you to the side. Because you forgot. You got spiritual amnesia. And it's going to kill you. Uh, it kills churches. When churches forget their heritage of faith, it kills it. I mean, it's, it still may exist. But, I mean, the cloudy pillar of God's glory may have moved on. The anointing may have left years ago. But they're so talented that it just keeps going on. Who noticed that he was gone? Who noticed? They forgot. Uh, it kills passion. When we just get like routine and rote in our faith, we somewhere we, we've let ourselves forget where we've been with God, what He's done for us. It kills effectiveness. It just it kills. It kills. It kills. The line between taking for granted and taking the credit 
becomes almost indiscernible. About the time you realize that you've begun to take God for granted, it's not near as big a deal as it was. I've lived on since then, grown up, oh, that's a different me. Praise God it is. But I get to tell the story of the different me. That's part of my testimony. I'm protected. The enemy is overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. And when I start taking him for granted, and the whole thing for granted, my deliverance, the past work God's done, then taking credit whew, comes right in on top of it. And you don't know the exact moment it crosses over. You just don't know. But I tell you, by the time you realize you're taking God for granted, you probably are also have you've taken some ownership over the credit. Well, here's what I did. Um, here's what I did. And, uh, you know, I just was stronger than some people that I know that just won't do it. And so by the time you're taking him for granted, you're probably also beginning to take his credit. And that's called taking his glory. And I wrote down an instruction of four words if that happens. Stop, drop, and roll. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> when do you realize? Because... Girlfriend, there is pain coming. Guy friend, there, you start taking his credit, and that means you're taking his glory. That's another word for taking his glory. And you start doing that, and uh, listen, he's going to come for you. And I don't mean that he doesn't come in love, but I'm just going to say he's not going to let you have his glory. No, he's not. He's just not going to. Oh boy, that's uh, that is a warning. Uh, God does not share His glory. I think it's tragic that any of us would try to get it or take credit. I think we ought to live with a grateful heart and marvel and remember the great things God has done. And if it's been worthwhile and of eternal value or kingdom significance, it's God working through us. That's right. And I, I want to say to all of you, uh, from the bottom of our heart together, you are in my opinion, the viewers of life today, and especially those of you who are watching right now, I think you're the most sensitive people to what really matters. I think you're an example and an inspiration to the whole church because if you see something that's important, and by the way, I'm glad that people who see a need or have a need or a missionary can come to us and talk to us because they believe not just that Betty cares or James cares or even Life Outreach cares. They believe that the people who watch what we do care deeply and that you take it very seriously as members of the body of Christ that we can, in fact, extend his hands of love and mercy and help. You're amazing. I, I want you to look in and I think you're going to be captivated, not just by the scene where you pass over and see many images, but I think you're going to see individuals and just see if when you see them, if it doesn't say something to you that you recognize as being very important. Watch closely. Globally, contaminated water extinguishes hundreds of thousands of lives every year and nearly half of those lost are children under the age of five. In Angola, mothers face an awful choice between giving their children dangerous contaminated water or watching them suffer from dehydration. In Cambodia, waterborne diseases are wiping out entire families. Our team encountered parents who have lost as many as seven children. In the Amazon, disease-causing organisms are not the only danger families face in their daily quest to quench their thirst. In this village, sending your child to the only available source of water means exposing them to a harrowing array of deadly creatures that lurk in and around the water. The vulnerable children who depend on this water for survival must run a daily gauntlet of danger risking their lives just for a drink of water. These odds are far from fair. Yet parents reluctantly run this terrible risk with their little ones day after day because there is simply no alternative. At Life Outreach International, we can give them an alternative. 
one that will give them clean, clear, life-giving water. But only if you act with compassion, today, before it's too late. You know, when I look at those settings and those scenes where Betty and I have been all over the world, and I think we're going to drill, with your help, 500 more water wells in 15 different nations. But when I was looking at those children, some of them just capture my heart. And you look at, look at their little faces, and you look in not to just a great uh, sea of need, but you're seeing the, the faces of these little children. Just look at those. Those images right there, that little girl. You know what she's saying when she looks up? Is there hope? Is there help? Betty, we're the ones that look into that little girl's eyes and the thousands that she represents and say, we will give you more than just a cup of water. We will give you a well of water. Absolutely. And you know, the solution is very simple, but the need is very great. I hope you'll join us and let's drill these water wells. Let's give them life, water for life and then introduce the life of Jesus to them. It will make a big difference. It makes it so easy when they have seen the love expressed to understand the love mm -hmm. and its origin in our Father and in Christ. They listen so well. Would you do as an individual what many people have told us they found indescribable joy doing? Making it a goal to drill a well every year. We have some businesses and some companies that drill. We have a few businesses that give the resources to drill every month. They say, we're gonna send you the money for a well every month. Now see, those are worthy goals, but, but you need to hear this. You may be able to drill a well. I pray you will. I pray you'll be excited about it. Betty and I committed to do this more than 10 years ago. And we watch God do some amazing things to enable us to do it. And we take joy in that. You know, the Lord really does bless those who love to bless because God likes to bless through yielded vessels. And so you can drill a well, you do it. Listen to this. Most of the money, Betty, comes not from the people who give the 4,800. That's so important, so meaningful. Or people who give 24 or 1,200 and pray for three to join or another to join. Most of it comes from people who understand that $48, did you understand that? $48 will give 10 people water the rest of their life. Don't we wish we could do that here in the States and in other advanced countries? Well, we can do it with those wells. And remember, in many places, they don't even have electricity that they can depend upon. And so we give them a manual pump that even children can get the fresh, clean water. The $48 will give 10 people, 144, 30 people, or whatever you can do, please, just ask God. What do you want me to do to meet the need in that child's life, to be the answer to that family's prayer? Would you go to lifetoday.org or dial that number, take your bank card, use it like a check, and make the gift God puts on your heart? We would like to send you our pastor, Robert Morris, his new book. It's on hearing God. It's called Frequency. Tune in to hear God. This is fabulous teaching. The reason that our church is filled with so many people, over 30,000 a week, coming to the church because they hear the Father's voice through a pastor, but they learn to hear God's voice. It is the question most people are asking, our pastor Robert and Betty and I, how do you hear God? Well, Robert wants to help. We also have a journal that you can write down how God is revealing his way and his word to you to tune your ears be a real blessing. We want to say thank you. We have a beautiful bronze that we're offering. We want to bless you as you bless others. Please, right now, lifetoday.org or just dial the number. Do what God has led you to do. Thank you. Every day, children living in extreme poverty are forced to make a dreadful choice. Drink filthy, polluted water filled with deadly disease or die from thirst. No child should ever be faced with this decision. The good news is there is a solution. Mission Water for Life is one of the most proven and viable demonstrations of God's love in the world today. Suffering can end because clean water changes everything. With your gift today, you can help establish and drill 500 water wells in remote villages in over 15 different nations. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five people. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. 
$72 will provide for 15 people, and $144 will help provide fresh water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we would like to send you Pastor Robert Morris' new book, Frequency. As you read, you'll discover how to hear God's voice, receive direction for your life, and experience a deeper connection with God. With your gift of $100 or more, you'll also receive the Hearing God Daily Journal and Scripture Pen, a wonderful way to record what God is impressing on your heart and a beautiful keepsake for your daily prayer time. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well and you may request our beautiful Majesty Bronze Sculpture. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Here we are in East Africa in Burundi and uh, we have been very privileged to come and just meet some of the sweetest little ones and their mothers that I can possibly imagine. We've heard stories of how one and two and three children have passed away because they have contracted cholera, a waterborne disease. I'm a mom and I really understand how painful it would possibly be to take their child to a water source, only knowing that once they take that water, their tummies will begin to hurt, they will get diarrhea and the heartbreak that these moms must face when they're watching their children suffer and struggle so. So will you go to the phone or go online and make your best gift? And let's give these kids water for life. Well, I think that your response to a very real need indicates that you're on the right frequency and you're tuned in to tune out some sounds and tune in to the voice of God. And by the way, the network and the channel and the noise, is, it's out there. But you can select and you can hear. I think Robert will help you. So we're saying thanks for hearing God and reaching out and sharing his love and helping us provide water for those who need it desperately. And also, not only giving them water for life, Betty, but telling them about the yes. water of life. That's the reason we do it. Thank you. Thanks for watching Life Today. I wonder how our Heavenly Father sometimes looks at His children and saying, hey, there's so much more for you. Best-selling author Andy Andrews, tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.